Hi, just a quick uh, little tech tip thing I um, wanted to share with you guys. Um, just probably a month and a half, two months ago, I was cruising around uh, on eBay and I came across one of these little component testers. Um, it's about a $20 item and it's got a little um, AT Mega 328 on the board, a little LCD display, very few other components, a couple of transistors, a bunch of resistors and things. and um, got a little LCD display and it's supposed to be able to do uh, a whole bunch of different component testing uh, all automatically identifying things like MOSFETs, bipolar transistors, resistors, diodes, LEDs, um, capacitors, inductors and a whole bunch of different uh, variants in quite a wide range as well. So I thought I'd get one and it just arrived a little, bit, a little while ago so I thought I'd do a quick uh, run through it to see how accurate it is compared to um, a $500 multimeter like one of my Agilents. And I don't expect too much out of it, but uh, it'll be interesting to see that uh, a little universal checker like this, how well it actually will operate. So um, without further ado, let's just get straight to the bench and hook it up to some random electronic components and see what it can make of them. So I've grabbed a whole bunch of random components out of my um, salvaged and uh, clean up bit bucket where uh, I just throw things in until I get time to sort them out. And we're just going to pick a few things here. We've got inductors, we've got capacitors, we've got resistors, uh, LEDs and uh, diodes and stuff. So we're just going to stick them in, see what it makes of it. And we'll put it on my Agilent multimeter and see what it makes of it there as well. So we can compare readings. Um, I'll also get up my Vichy um, resistance standard as well and plug that in to see how well that does. But let's first of all um, whip through a few components and see what it makes of them. Alright, first up we've got a one microfarad capacitor. This thing is very, very old. I got it when I started my electronics career from RS Components and uh, it says on here it's supposed to be one microfarad I think from what I can see. So let's just uh, plug that in, drop it down. This device works off of a um, 9 volt battery just uh, hooked in here and all you do is you just press the one button comes on and it does a quick self test now my battery is a little low but I think it's still probably going to be okay and um, there we go 974.9 nanofarads so that's not too bad at all it's actually uh, pretty close to one mic considering the age it's uh, done it's uh, holding its own pretty good so let's uh, take that off and we'll connect it to the Agilent on capacitance and see what it makes of it. All right, so that's just hooked on a couple of leads here. Let's switch to capacitance and 979. So that's actually not too bad. That's reading 979.1 nanofarads. And our tester was reading, I believe the same. And that was reading 970. This one is reading, let's see, can't remember what it was, 974. So yeah, they're very, very close to each other. That's pretty good. Let's try another capacitor. That's one bites the dust. It's a random large electrolytic. So this one, according to the can, is... Um, 1,000 microfarads. So let's just drop it in, put the connector down, hit the test button. Mostly it doesn't matter how you connect things, but of course occasionally you can hit it wrong like I just did there. So 990.5 microfarads according to the tester. And let's see what the Agilent says. Still on capacitance, let me just drop it into the 1000, so 990 versus 1000. That's uh, still pretty good. So that's two down, it's done pretty good. That's quite a wide range of capacitors there. Let's um, try something a little different here. Got a old, um, I think this is about one or 10 nanofarads or something like that. Can't remember exactly what it is. Let's stick it in the Agilent first just to see what it is. So 135 nanofarads is what we're getting on the Agilent. 
So let's put it into the uh, component tester. Clip it in. Hit the test button. And we had 130 odd nanofarads. So let's see what this makes of it. And 136 nanofarads. So that's pretty good. That's still very, very close. Considering how uh, inexpensive this component tester is, um, it's doing a pretty damn good job of identifying those things. All right, let's throw some resistors at it instead then. Um, random resistors. Okay, what's this for this one? 100K. Let's just drop that in the um, pins. Notice I'm not actually changing anything on this little component tester. All I'm doing is dropping it in and hitting the test button. It's doing all the work to figure out exactly what uh, this component is. So, 101.7K. And according to the Agilent, and of course the Agilent, I'm going to have to switch to the resistance range. 101.6, 101.7. That's pretty accurate for a $20... Um, little tester there. Let's take another one. What is this? This is uh, 1K by the look of it. Let's stick it in the tester. Let's hit the test button. Nine seventy nine ohms. So nine seven nine point seven. So nine seven nine. Stick it in the um, Agilent. 976, so still within um, less than a percent error between the two of them, like 0.4%. Um, that's pretty good. Let's just go for um, something a little different here. Ah, I can't remember which way around this is, but this is a um, MOSFET that I've been using on my breadboard. So you can see I've got it soldered onto some little pins here. So I can't test this with my Agilent, of course, because it won't do MOSFETs. Well, let's just randomly plug it into here and close it down and hit test and see what it makes of it. So, P-channel MOSFET, capacitance is 581 picofarads, the threshold 1.2 volts, and it gives you, as you can see here, I'm going to zoom in just for this for a second, it actually gives you the, um, tells you exactly what the readings are um, for it, um, for the pins. So one, two, three. Oh, sorry, didn't keep it, do it quick enough. So it's telling me that uh, this is drain, source, and gate. Um, so it's telling me that one, two, three, these pins. Now, if you look at the connectors, there's actually numbers written all the way along the back here. So this is pin one, two, three, three, one, two, three. And on the bottom, um, I think it's the same on the other side as well. So these are exact same on both sides. So it's telling me now, because of, I know what the numbers are here and what it's telling me here, I can actually see exactly what the um, pin connections are for this MOSFET. So let's try something else. Let's stick a um, great big diode in. I'll just... Chuck it in a couple of pins, clamp down the zip socket, and we'll hit test. So this time, I've got to back out a little bit, sorry. There we go. When I hit test, you'll actually see it testing this time because the LED should light there. It's actually figuring out what it is, and it's now telling me that it's a diode. It's telling me which way round it is. It's uh, also telling me the forward voltage of 3.08 volts. So let's see if the... Um, Agilent can make head no tail of this thing because it's a little bit higher than the normal diode test that the Agilent would be able to do. So I'm just switched it to diodes and I'm plugging in my leads. I was plugging the resistors and capacitors directly on the socket before to eliminate any lead errors. And well, that way around, it's uh, not reading anything. So let's uh, switch it around. And there we go. So that's actually illuminating it and it's telling me it's 2.87 volts. So the little component tester here was saying uh, 3 volts. This is saying 2.7, uh, sorry, 2.87. So 
2.9 volt so they're pretty close to each other so that's not bad at all again um, so quite happy with that let's uh, try and find another random component here all right so let's just uh, pick an inductor this time now again Agilent does not measure inductors I have an inductor here it's just a random one that I salvaged out of a switch mode power supply I was just playing around with so it's got a couple of pins on the end like I said, my Agilent is not capable of measuring this. So let's just drop this in here and see what it makes of it. So I just hit test again, nothing else. And see what we get. So there you go. 0.64 millihenries. And it has a resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. So there you go, that's pretty good. Obviously it identified it automatically as an inductor and was able to um, tell me its internal resistance as well. So I actually have a very tiny inductor here now. Let's just throw that in. If I can't hold it, there's still enough to get it on. Uh, pins. Drop down the connector. And hit test. See what we get with that. Oh, there you go, 0 0.05 millihenries with a 0.1 ohm um, resistance. So it's uh, successfully measured that one. I don't have an inductance meter to be able to um, truly test what the actual values of those are. So I'm just going to have to assume that it's doing a reasonable good job of it. All right, I've got a 1N4148 little diode here. Should have a forward voltage of about... 0.6 volts, something like that. So I'll just drop it. There we have. So I know it's about 600 millivolts and it's telling me 666 millivolts. Um, reverse current is 6 nanoamps, so I'm not sure how accurate that is on the nanoamps, but it certainly gave me a good reading there. Um, what are the components do I have here that I can actually try? thrown in a bunch of different capacitors that all worked out pretty good thrown in some resistors oh okay that's fine let's uh, bring in the big guns here all right now I'm gonna test how accurate it is at measuring resistance because I've got my Vichy resistance box here which I've used on plenty of other videos and I'm just gonna hook it up to actually see how accurate this can measure. Now in order to do this I'm going to just put use a couple of components with um, a clip on so at the lowest resistance lab levels we're gonna get some errors because um, I've got extra connections here but nevertheless we will do our best to Get this thing to work. All right, so that's got that end on. Now, what I'll do to start with is I'm just going to short these out. All right, so I've got the couple of clips right there. Now, in order for you to see the screen properly, I'm not going to show you the resistance box, but I will call out what I'm adding. So right now, I've got shorted out, so it should be showing zero ohms or close to it anyway. So 0 0.03, so we got a 30 milliohm offset. That's not too bad. So now let's put it onto a um, one ohm resistor and we'll hit test. So this has got, as I said, 30 milliohm offset when I measured zero. So we'll see what we get now. 1.09, so that's actually measuring 1.06 then, if we allow for the fact that we have the same offset. Um, so that's 6% um, out, which if you consider that even my Agilents normally are uh, only something like half percent, one percent accurate for resistance, um, this thing at the very low end, that's not doing too bad a, a job of measuring. We'll go up to 10 ohms now and try that. 10.2, so now it's down to uh, 2%, sorry, yes, 2% inaccurate. 
which is, you know, if you're measuring resistors and you're getting roughly the right value, I mean, for 20 bucks, you really can't complain about this. Let's go up to 100 ohms, try that. We're going to go all the way up to 1 meg and see how we go in 10 uh, decade increments. 99.8, so that's pretty good. Uh, 1K, we hit test. 1003, so that's now 0.3%. That's uh, pretty good in that range. These resistors are um, around about seven digits of zero, so they, they're very, very accurate. So any discrepancies we're seeing on this little component tester is all down to the component tester itself. So that's a 10K I'm giving it, and it's reading 10.07, so still 0.7% accurate, which is very, very impressive considering this. Uh, I've given it 100K now. So 100.2, so that's reading basically 0.2% uh, out. And now we'll give it the biggest one I've got on these precision resistors, which is 1 mega ohm. And that's reading 1.002 mega ohms. So that is very, very impressive, I think, for a little $20 um, Chinese-made component tester from eBay. Um, I didn't expect it to be quite that good, um, but I am pleasantly surprised to see that it is. So if you guys need um, some little component tester and you really don't know, um, you know, you don't have the budget for something like a uh, higher-end meter, and you just want to test resistors, inductors, capacitors, things like that. Um, it looks like this thing is uh, not actually bad, a bad deal because, uh, you know, forgetting the flexibility of all those different uh, components to read and being able to get the accuracy that it seems to be demonstrating, um, that is very, very impressive. So I don't know what else I can test with this thing. It can do FETs, it does transistors. Do I have any other transistors here? Um, hanging around, let's see. See if I can find anything else to test on this thing before I'm done. All right, I found a uh, random capacitor. I'm not sure what value it is at all. It's another radio spares one, but um, it's very old and not too sure what it is because there's no there's some indentation that's difficult to read. So let's just throw it in here and uh, see what it tells us. And I probably, I don't know if it's a good capacitor or not, so let's just try a slightly different pin in case I'm actually putting them both on pin one again or something. Nope, I guess I was. So that's reading um, 9242 picofarads, so It's actually giving me a good reading there. Let's stick it on my Agilent and see what it gives me. So I'm putting it on the terminals now. There we go, 9364 nanofarads. And our tester was giving us, I can't remember what the value was now. Let's put it back in and retest it. Yep, 931 instead of 934, so that's pretty good. It's, uh, now, I think I found the um, component here. I'm pretty sure this is actually a xenodiode, not a regular diode. So let's just put this in, and we'll see what it makes of this. And I keep doing that. Sorry about that, chaps. Let's just change that. Well, there you go. Now, of course, the xenodiode has got um, current flow in both directions depending on what it is. So of course in one direction it's going to be pretty much like any other silicon diode which is it's showing you here U forward 1 is 751 millivolts so that is the normal forward bias of the Zener diode. Now in the other direction it's showing you this as two diodes back to back but of course we know it's a Zener. Sorry lost the uh, power there a second. Now it's testing in the other direction, it's 2.37 volts. Now I'm not too sure what current it's passing through there, but um, that's probably, it's probably a 3 volt Zener or a 2 point, uh, I'll have to check what uh, my diodes were that I had ordered because I'm sure it's around a 3 volt one, but it might be a 2.5 or something. 
Anyway, it seems to be certainly identifying it as a Zener diode and uh, giving you the forward voltage in both directions. And the last one I've got here is a 1N4007, I think. So we'll just drop that in. Hit the test button. And there we have it. It's a uh, 639 millivolts forward and uh, reverse leakage of 14 nanoamps. So I'm just going to try and test this Zener diode. So there's one direction. So my Agilent is actually saying 1.86 volts. My little component tester there was actually saying 2.3. So there probably based on the fact that there are different currents being passed through it and we're not getting enough to the point of it being saturated because if I reverse the diode now oh didn't have that in screen let's do that again that's in one direction so 706 millivolts let's reverse the diode and we'll see the um, Zeno side of it 1.86 volts so that's probably not putting enough current through the diode for this um, to get it into its linear region but um, it's certainly showing you that the component tester is adequately handling that as well. It's got a higher voltage than the Agilent has to put across diodes too. So the Agilent would probably stop working much above uh, 4 volts because it's only got uh, 4 1.5 volt batteries in it or 1.2 volt batteries. So it doesn't have the uh, supply voltage to go much above these lower voltage Zeners but because this is running on a 9 volt battery it certainly can. So there we have it the um, component tester off of eBay 20 bucks odd it's a uh, from fish 8840 I'll um, put the details in on the video as well as a little pop-up so that you can write it down but uh, you can find it easily if you go onto eBay and just simply search for component testers um, or transistor testers. This is actually labeled on the back as transistor tester, but as you just saw there, it will do pretty much all of the discrete components and uh, it's not too bad from an accuracy perspective either. Anyway, it's a Fish 8840 is the one that I have specifically here. Looks like it's going to be a little uh, useful addition to my collection of component testers and things. Well, it's my first component tester, but a good collection to my lab for doing quick checks when I'm working on breadboards and ripping components out of things to see if they're still working. Anyway, that's it. Hope you like it. That was just a quick show of one of these uh, tech toys I got off of eBay. And uh, if I get some more, I'll let you know.